Perez. Number 10, Shingo Takatsu. Number 17 is Ross Glowed. Number 18, Cliff Polite. Number 20, John Garland. Number 26, Orlando Hernandez. Number 32, Dustin Hermanson. Number 34, welcome back, Freddie Garcia. Number 36, among the White Sox newcomers, Chris Widger. Number 38, Pablo Orzuna. Number 43, Damaso Marte. Number 46, Neil Cotts. Number 51, Luis Viscaino. And number 52, Jose Contreras. <laughs> and now the starting lineup for today's opening day at U.S. Cellular Field. Beginning with lucky number 13, White Sox manager Ozzy Guillen. Batting leadoff for Ozzy today and playing left field is number 22, Scott Posednik. <laughs> Batting second and playing second base, number 15, Tadehito Iguchi. <laughs> Batting third, the designated hitter. Number eight, Carl Everett. Batting fourth, the first baseman, number 14, Paul Canerco. Batting fifth, the right fielder, number 23, welcome Jermaine Dye. Batting sixth and playing center field, number 33, Aaron Rowan. In the bullpen and catching today is number 12, A.J. Pierzynski. Batting eighth for the White Sox. The third baseman, number 24, Joe Creedy. And batting ninth, playing shortstop for manager Ozzy Guillen today, and for you fans, number five, Juan Uribe. Pitching today for the White Sox, his fourth opening day start in the bullpen and warming up, number 56, Mark. 
Burley. Just gonna get our adrenaline going. We gotta just kind of just hold it in and not let it to, not let it affect us too much. Because if it does, we're gonna go out there and or me personally, I'm gonna go out there and try to throw the ball past the catcher. Cause I'm gonna just gonna get our adrenaline going. We gotta just kind of just hold it in and not let it to. If I did, a hundred would be a reasonable number. He can do it. I mean. Uh, the bottom line is we're going to go by our heart and our heads and uh, look at both, look, check the game out and see what's going on. And usually that doesn't lie to you. Um, if he's cruising, he's going to get more than ample chance to go further. And if not, well, we've got a good bullpen and we'll turn it over to those guys. All right, go get him, Don. He's Don Cooper. We'll see you guys after the game. We are coming to you from U.S. Cellular Field, where this afternoon, Comcast Sportsnet presents Opening Day 2005. It's Paul Canerco, Aaron Rowan, Carl Everton, the Sox, as they get set to bump heads with Eric Wedge's tough Cleveland Indian. Hi, everybody, and welcome. With DJ Darren Jackson, I'm Ken Harrell, as we get set to bring you White Sox baseball right here on Comcast. And it could not be a better day, a beautiful day here for baseball on opening day. And it is opening day, our favorite day of the season. Also, the ballpark looks fantastic, DJ, and I just couldn't have it any better. You're, you're not kidding, Hawk. There's some great changes around the ballpark. The fans are going to love it when they come out here to the ballpark. I walked around earlier, very fan-friendly. There's going to be some changes as the season progresses. It's going to be fun baseball here at U.S. Cellular all season long. And yeah, we got our ace out there, Mark Burley. You better believe it. 16 and 10 last season. Burley's stellar, just like he usually is. Through the spring, 3 and 1, earned run average in the twos. Expect him to be as sharp, getting it and throwing it as we have always seen in the past. He's going against a tough one today and Jake Westbrook. Westbrook last year an all-star for the first time. Had a tough spring, but he is still a guy that can hold our socks down if he's on. All right, sit back, relax, and strap it down. Opening day 2005 right here on Comcast. On field on opening day 2005. It has been very exciting all spring long watching these White Sox perform on a regular basis right here over Comcast Sportsnet. Today it is the official ball game that you're going to be seeing. Everything that has led up to this hasn't mattered. Now it counts as Mark Burley is looking to go ahead and start things off in a positive way and improve upon his 16 and 10 record of last year and lead himself right into an all-star game and hopefully further down the line right in this is my city where i had a very calm and under control locker room today saving that energy hopefully just for this first pitch cleveland on the other hand is a team that is expecting to do big things this year they're one of the teams that is predicted to take the central we will have to wait and see that well folks we're ready as the White Sox are charging that field, Paul Konerko the first out, followed by Iguchi. So let's go ahead right now and take a look at the Southwest batting order of Eric Wedge. At the top of Cleveland's batting order is Speedy Coco Crisp. He'll be followed by second baseman Ronnie Belliard. Power hitting Travis Hafner bats third. Victor Martinez burst onto the scene last year. He's batting cleanup. Aaron Boone healthy after missing all of last season. Casey Blake, he's out in right field. Ben Broussard at first base. Jose Hernandez, former shortstop, is out in left field, and Johnny Peralta will be at shortstop. Mark Burley. That man, look at this, 2004. The usual numbers for him, 35 starts, 16 wins, 10 losses, earned run average in the threes, innings 245, which was... Of course, the top of the American League hits 257, 51 walks, 165 strikeouts for Burley. Let's take a look right now at our Rico White Sox defense. 
Pasednik will be in left field. Aaron Rowan in center. Jermaine Dye out in right field. Creedy, Uribe, Iguchi, and Konerka will be on the infield dirt. And A.J. Pierzynski will do the catching for Mark Burley. Got ourselves a beautiful opening day here. 60 degrees, humidity at 42%. Winds 10 to 15. Forecast for mostly sunny on the afternoon. Our umpires. Crew chief Rick Reed is at home plate. Terry Kraft is at first. Ted Barrett at second base. And Alfonso Marquez down at third base. And while we have a minute, let's go ahead and hear from our starting pitchers today. It's going to get our adrenaline going. We got to just kind of just hold it in and not let it to not let it affect us too much because if it does, we're going to go out there and or me personally, I'm going to go out there and try to throw the ball past the catcher because I'm going to have so much adrenaline going. So just go out there and keep my emotions in and, and try to try to bring home a win. Oh, without a doubt, we're expecting to win it. Uh, we, we feel strong about what we can do. And uh, I think the guys that we've added in the offseason are uh, really going to be key parts to, to help us get over that hump and, and compete. Mark Burley. Ready to take on the Indians. Last year, he is 1-2 and two against Cleveland. Had a 4-3-7 earned run average. He has not had his best success against these Indians. We're ready for baseball, folks, and ready for the play-by-play -play from my partner, Ken the Hawk Harrelson. Hi, DJ. Thank you, and welcome to opening day 2005. And we'd like to welcome all of our viewers watching on Comcast Cable 37. That's channel 37. Also, for those of you watching in high definition on Comcast Cable Channel 200. Coco Crisp will lead it off. Switch inning center fielder. Had a good spring. Hit 424. Last year hit 297, 15 homers, and drove in 71. So the first pitch of the 05 season from Burley. Taken outside. These two clubs met 19 times last year. Sox won 10 of them. But they played 10 games right here at USA Le Field, and the Indians won six. As that fastball foul back to even the count at one. Cleveland last year hit 276 as a ball club with a 4.81 ERA. And as DJ told you, Mark Burley really has not had a lot of success against the Indians. One and two last season, five and seven lifetime. Ball hit semi, semi hard to a Gucci. So Crisp is retired. One down to the second baseman, Ronnie Belliard, who just killed us last season. Belliard. Last year, a 282 hitter, 12 homers, drove in 70. On the spring, hit 273, no homers, and knocked in four. Indians on the spring were 16 and 13. They hit 299 as a club with 43 home runs. Two and 0 the count. There's one man who had beautiful, beautiful U.S. cellular feel. I'll tell you, where do you see this ballpark? Where do you come? The changes they have made have been magnificent. There's a lot more left to come. So here at U.S. cellular field, 330 down the left field line, 335 down the right field line, 375 in the gaps, and 400 straight away center. Ronnie Belliard. Breakout kind of season for him last year. Yes, it was. 48 doubles along with those high other totals he had come backer to the wrong man two down well it's going to be interesting to see if our pitchers can feel any better than they did last year we have some new additions out there so I, I think it's going to be kind of tough we know Burley and Garland are going to be just fine out there but those other three we're going to have to wait and see <laughs> it's hard to top those two yes Here's another guy who had a breakout season with the Tribe last year, Travis Hafner. He had 311, 28 homers, and drove in 109. Yeah, he is one of the top hitters in the American League with those numbers. Uribe, quick, one, two, three inning for Mark. After having a play, it's the Indians, nothing, and the good guys coming to bat. Let's take a look at our Southwest Airlines batting order that Ozzie Guillen presents to you this afternoon. The top of the order is Speedy Pasednik, Higuchi, and then you get to Everett. Kernerko, Dai, and Aaron Rowan, A.J. Pierzynski, Joe Creed, and Juan Uribe. 
Jake Westbrook last year, 14 and nine, a 3.38 earned run average, just allowed to 19 home runs. And before we show you our picks to click, you at home select yours as Scott Pasednik. Takes down low. Got on his praying, hit 355, seven for eight in stolen bases. And of course, that's what he did last year with 70 stolen bases. Pops in the big leagues. Outfield swung around to the left, gap in right center. And Casey Blake well off that line in right as Aaron Boone, who did not play last year, throws him out. And right, let's take a look at the rest of this Indians defense brought to you by Rico. That's Hernandez, Crisp, and Blake in the outfield. Boone just made the play. Peralta's at short. Belliard at second. Broussard at first. Martinez. Victor Martinez behind the plate. So here's Tadahito Oguchi. Westbrook, 27 years old, 6'3", 200 pounds, out of Athens, Georgia. Westbrook, last year, 1-1 one against our Sox. Lifetime is 4-3. and three. Is that is fouled at the plate and very quickly 0-2, and, and he's got the kind of sinker. If he gets in that rhythm out there, whew, he can be nails. And he's thrown two good ones down and into Iguchi that he's going to have to just kind of get to that protection swing now. Breaking ball. Way low, way away. It's going to be a serious learning process for Tadehito. We saw it took Shingo quite some time last year to go through the hitters. Well, it's going to take this man even longer probably to really feel comfortable against all these new pitchers he's facing. Two down. So with two out, let's check out our Heineken picks to click. First one of the season. We didn't have any in spring training. Jim Angio, our director and the crew. Going with Scott Pasadnik. DJ is going to go with Juan Uribe. And the birthday boy, Herm Schneider. Our birthday boy and I are going to go with A.J. Pierzynski. Happy birthday, Hermie. Yes. And that's not DJ. That's Robin, Aiden, and DJ. That's right. There's a strike to Carl Everett. 367 on the spring, six homers. Govin, 22. He has faced Westbrook 10 times. Carl has five hits. And Westbrook, like Burley, will come right at you. He'll get it and throw it. Boy, for Westbrook, it was just a serious confidence building season for him. He finally just found it. It all came together for him. It would be that all-star season for him. See how focused he was. He just didn't even notice or hear that Everett had called time. And if you think about Westbrook, 14 and 9 last year, but 26 and 28 in his career. That tells you the improvements that were made in just one season for him. Good try. Well, that game he beat us last year. It's not that we didn't have a chance, you know, like some guys go out there with stuff. But he just dominated us. And every time we have a little threat, he was up for it. Shut him down. Well, he was an all-star pitcher last year, and that's how he went about his business as a guy that knew how to handle all the tough situations. Well, also, was, he pitched inside more against us last year than we've ever seen him before. He was always a way, a way, a way. Somebody got him to start pitching inside. Top foul. Well, we showed the graphic when going over his numbers a little while ago. He only allowed 19 home runs last year compared to Mark Burley's 33. And that being because he's got that good sinker. He's not someone you're going to try and go up there and take deep throughout the game. If he makes a mistake, you get lucky, then you do it. Good pitch right there by Westbrook. Good job by Carl just to fight it off. Westbrook last season, a 250 oh. innings pitched. He only allowed 208 hits. As Carl is down on strikes, and it'll do a 1 2 3 inning for Westbrook after one, no score. It's 
Switch hitting catcher, the cleanup hitter, Victor Martinez, will lead it off here in the top of the second. Going after first pitch, trying to take him in the right field. And if you get a, a blue and gray uniform on the day, that is the way you've got to try to get Mark Burley. Get him early. If you're a right hand hitter, into right, right center. Martinez last year, 23 homers, 108 driven in. Along with 38 doubles and a triple. Well, we've looked at the numbers at Martinez prior to last year throughout the minor leagues. This guy was just a guy that could light it up. He could hit. And he proved it at the big league level. Now he's the number four hitter for these Cleveland Indians. A little chopper three hopper. So the first four outs, all ground balls, and that'll bring up the veteran newly acquired Aaron Boone, who did not play last year. In 03 with Cincinnati in New York, he did hit 24 homers and knocked in 96. Yeah, left knee surgery. He's playing a pickup basketball game. Blew things out. Expensive basketball game. Yes. Well, you know what? There's so many guys that are playing basketball games, doing things they're not supposed to during the offseason, and they're just fortunate enough not to get hurt. Aaron, 31 years old. Had a good spring. 350, three homers, and knocked in 15. Lifetime 270 hitter. Pull a string on him, heading out, out in front. Mark had 35 starts last year, 245 innings. And lifetime. He is 24 over at 69 and 45. Full count. Even though Burley's not had his best success against the Indians, this lineup against him today just has a career 262 average. 21 for 80. High into short left field. Uribe making the call. Called off now by Pesednik. Two down. Well, I really like I really like our outfield. With Pesednik in left, he's going to cover a lot of territory. Aaron Rowan, we already know, is going to run down anything and everything. And Jermaine Dyer, what we have seen of him this spring training is Nothing different than what we're used to. Casey Blake in the center field. Aaron is there. That is six up, six down for Burley with dispatch. No score, bottom of the second inning. Let's take a look right now at our Geico Direct moment quote. From Aaron Rowan on being overlooked here in the Central. I would rather be overlooked than have a target on my back. If you're a pick to win it, I would, wouldn't say there's more pressure, but people are quicker to jump all over you if you don't get off to a good start. True as that, Aaron, true as that. But still, get off to a good start. Here's Polly Canerco, 364 on the spring, four homers, knocked in 10. Last year, 41 homers, 117 driven in. Two. Bell yard playing in perfectly. The one out. Your Chicago Land and Northwest Indiana Pontiac dealers invite you up to see the Pontiac Fundamentals. Bring the kids and have them swing the bat, throw some pitches, and run the bases. All new Pontiac Fundamentals presented by your Chicago Land and Northwest Indiana Pontiac dealers. For our tickets, visit whitesox.com or call 866 Sox Game. Lower away to Jermaine Dye. Jermaine has faced Westbrook ten times in his career, has three hits, two of which stayed in the park. There's the strike. Jermaine on the spring at 258, a couple of homers, drove in 12. Start chasing that one off Westbrook. He 
you're not going to do a whole bunch. Maybe kill a few worms. Well, not even more because Roger Bosser doesn't allow them out there. What? That's no. That's good for your grass. No. Two and two. Outfield bunch just a little bit far. The 31-year-old outfielder, and that's back through the middle and into center field. So the first hit of the 05 season belongs to Jermaine Dye. And that's my recommendation for the rest of this White Sox batting order is to think back up the middle. Got a better chance of squaring a sinker up if you're not over swinging at it and you just want to put the good part of the bat on the ball. And work from there. Back up the middle, take your ground ball hits. If it goes in other holes or goes somewhere else, that's just fine. Here's Aaron. Aaron, 438 on the spring, five homers. He knocked in 24. Big strike one. Well, when you mentioned earlier that Westbrook had given up fewer hits than innings pitch, that'll just tell you how good his sinker is. That's exactly right. So Usually sinker ball pitchers give up a lot of hits. Well, you know, You've got to realize this guy's going to limit to limit you what you're going to be able to do as a hitter. So don't get greedy. Don't sit up there, walk up there thinking, all right, I'm going to get something up in the zone. I'm going to crush it. No, 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 no. Take what this guy gives you. Get your base hits as Jermaine Dye just did. He doesn't throw a bunch of home runs, and he doesn't give up a bunch of hits. And very quickly, Aaron is 0-2. Now Martinez to the inside. Watch this. Little chopper. Aaron Boone on the move. Nice play. Two down. Now you're going to have a lot of plays down at third base off with Westbrook pitching just like this. Aaron Boone better be open gloving. And he does nicely. On the throw, I mean, on the run, the actual throw. So here's Pierzynski. Last year, hit 272, 11 homers, drove in 77. Lifetime against Westbrook is three for 12. Outside, Joe Creedy on deck. I sent a big hello out to somebody special down in uh, Arizona. Yep, every game. The big hurt. Big frame. I got him written down right here. Every game is that side of play, left side. I said he's going to watch every one of them. So we're going to say hello every day. Better believe it. Looking forward to getting his butt back here with us. Yeah, I used to say old big butt. Now he's old no, skinny butt. No, that's right. I couldn't say that this time. Oh. No. <laughs> For Frank, he looks very spelt. We're out in front now. The ball and two strikes. Oh, I tell you, the ballpark is just getting prettier and prettier and prettier. Yeah, you know how I like to walk around all the stadiums, and I took a walk around this one to see some of the changes. And I was talking to you about the about that before the game. This, I mean, it's hard to top this place. It really is. It is really nice. All the transformations that have been done here over the past three, four years have just turned this into one of the top places in the league to see. Get him inside again. And here's a shot right to the shortstop, Peralta. So that's a hang Wilfram for Przezinski, and after two, nothing. No runs, no hits, no errors for the tribe. No runs in that one hit. But Przezinski really creamed one right to the shortstop, Peralta. First baseman, Ben Broussard. Two for eight lifetime off mark. On the spring, hit 274, three homers, knocked in 11. And the count 2 0. Oh. Jeff Datz, the coach at first for Cleveland, and Joel Skinner over at third. There's a strike. Well, so far, the defense of the Indians has actually cost the White Sox a couple of hits. They've been playing them perfectly.
And folks, it's Dollar Dog Thursday, presented by Ballpark Franks this Thursday against the Indians at 105. Ballpark Franks are $1 each, and kosher hot dogs are $2.50 each at select stands. For tickets, call 866-SOX-GAME or visit whitesox.com. Well, that's the rich get richer and poor get poorer syndrome when you get pitchers like Burley and Westbrook who have that good control. You can cheat like a son of a gun out there defensively. And most of the time, you're going to be right. Uh, no question. A.J. Pierzynski was robbed on the shot that he hit. Also, back up the middle over the dirt. A hit taken away from Konerko. Hernandez. Jose Hernandez, last year with the Dodgers, hit 289, 13 homers, and drove in 29. But he had a good spring to make this club. 400, four homers, and knocked in 11. Softly hit. And that'll bring up a young man who's got a pair of big shoes to fill. Johnny Peralta. But he's got some talent. He's only 22 years old. Taking over for Omar Vizquel, who was just the linchpin of that Indian defense for 11 years. Peralta last year at Buffalo hit 326, 15 homers, and drove in 86 with 44 doubles. And he had a good spring. He had a terrific spring at 382, a couple of homers, and 14. So he can swing the bat. But last year at Buffalo, he made 27 errors. Yeah, that's that's not a good indicator when it comes to the defensive side of it. Not that we know what the field condition was. We do know the field condition here at the major league level, so we have no excuses basically to make 27 errors if you're the shortstop. That's a foul ball. And that'll even the count of two. Also, we mentioned Dats and Skinner at first and third. Buddy Bell is the bench coach for Eric Wedge, who, in my opinion, one of the better managers in the major leagues. From what we've seen, because he's been in this league, he can he can manage. And you got the great Eddie Murray, the hitting instructor. Carl Willis is the pitching coach. Well, they have themselves a pretty good staff, and they feel comfortable working together. I, I spent some time talking to some of them last year. And you can see the record of Eric Wedge. Rebay. That's nine up and nine down for Burley. As you see, no score here in the bottom of the third. And there you get a look at the fundamentals area here, the new section of the ballpark. That is just very, very nice. Interactive for the kids and adults if they want to get up there. Batting cages. There's a speed gun up there to test your arm. Some running and fielding and the new scout seats behind home plate, which is a beautiful area to sit and enjoy the game. First ball hunting is Creedy. One pitch one out here in the bottom of the third. And we're going to have some ground balls today, apparently. Well, Burley, of the nine outs he's recorded, has seven. So here's your rebate. The one thing about it, there are some guys that you want to try to take deep into counts, and there are some guys you don't want to. And the ones you don't want to take deep into counts are the good pitchers. You know what? That's why that overall theory of, hey, on base percentage, see more pitches, is a bunch of BS in so many cases sure because you got to look out there and see who the pitcher is before you say that. Sure it is. And they're trying to throw a blanket on it. No, nah, that's that's not going <laughs> to work. It's just that's not the way you can do it. If you could do it, you know, it had been done all through the baseball history. It's a game of firsts. There the comebacker. And by first, I mean early. Good pitchers are 0 1 0 2 1 2. And good pitchers, you better get them early in the count. They're going to get you. Yeah, like you want to go walking up there with Dennis Eckersley pitching and say, OK, be patient. <laughs> but Pedro and Schilling and all those no, guys. No, you no, go up there and try no. to take those guys deep in the count. You're 0 for 4. 
Actually, you're going to be 0 for 3 because that's the only time you can get up there. <laughs> Pesednik grounded out. Darren Boone at third. Aaron and a couple of steps in on the grass. Now Phil swung around to the left. Well, you take a man who's won 15 or more games, what, 17 consecutive years. And he pitched 01, 02, 1 2, probably more than anybody during those 17 years. Yeah, Greg Maddox is somebody that you don't want to get patient against. You can't. And let me tell you, I faced Greg Maddox, and I wasn't patient. I wasn't fit patient against many, though. Well, you know, now Maddox is also, and he knows his air's ball four, so good speed aboard. And the fans get a little bit of excitement here with that cheer. Well, the, the thought of Scott Pesetnik being a great hitter is, is very important, but the thought of Scott Pesetnik also having a pretty good eye is important, him reaching base. And we're talking about on base percentage. He's one guy, I don't care if he hits 244. If he's out there on base, he's going to help this team. One thing about it, though, as we mentioned the other day, he is 275, 280. He got a chance to steal 100 bases. As here's a Gucci struck out. So we'll see if Pesednik can break the rhythm of Jake Westbrook just a little bit. Victor Martinez behind the plate's got a cannon of an arm. Strike just on the outside edge of the outside corner. Westbrook is not not your premier guy in the league that you want to try and steal against. He's fairly quick to the plate. He's around the plate, and you got a catcher with a good arm, so it's got to be perfect for our leadoff hitter. Westbrook. Good rip right there by Tadahito. Meanwhile, it's 0 2. I think it's really going to help Iguchi batting second in this lineup this year. Reason being, that leadoff hitter. Iguchi's going to get better hitches and pitches because if Scott is on, they're going to worry about him. And that gives Iguchi a chance to break in a little easier than you'd expect. Bail him out right here, Scotty. Long. What Westbrook is doing is just right out of textbook. He's holding, he's varying it. Scott has no sense of rhythm off this guy. And then the quick step off. Another long set and another step off. Yeah, you said it a minute ago, Hawk, where let's see what Scott over at first base can do to throw off the rhythm of Westbrook and already causing him to step off step off alternate everything he's doing out there Close. Ooh. he's doing it just the way you're supposed to do it against a a threat like that well the only ironic thing about it is he's got a one two count on the hitter and the first pitch was right on the outside edge of the outside corner so he's worrying about a base runner when he just needs to throw one more strike Stops that one foul. As a matter of fact, just now, Iguchi hit that foul ball. And the first thing Westbrook did after the swing was look over to first base to see if see if Scott Pesednik was running. He was so concerned about if he took off. Well, let's see, Scotty right here. Give it a shot. Yeah, if you get thrown out, Iguchi will lead off. There he goes. And that's popped up softly. Boone makes the catch. And after three, no score. Top of the order for the tribe here in the top of the fourth. Coco Crisp started off this ball game with a ground ball to Aguchi at second. Just tuning in, Burley is retired all nine he has seen. Sox have one hit that by Jermaine Dye. And the count evens at one. Chris, he's going to be a pretty good leadoff man for him. He provides a little pop, 15 home runs, 24 doubles, along with above average speed.
Well, from what we saw of him last year, by the time the second half and especially the end of the second half came around, he looked like he was that mirror liked him. Uh, you know, it's he funny. Was dangerous. Yeah, and it, and it seems like Cleveland was trying, trying their best to put other people out there ahead of him. But they had to eventually realize, guess what? He's the best we have. And he's earned himself an opening day start. I'm talking about opening day starts. We just said hello to Big Frank, who had his streak of 14 consecutive opening day starts snapped this year. And believe you me, there's a lot of pride involved in those starts. You know, for Frank, he love he would love for it to be 20 in a row. I hope hopefully he can make it 19 out of 20. Yes. <laughs> good change up, good motion by Mark. Uh, you'll see these Indians as Burley continues to cruise. If he does, they'll start trying things a little bit differently. Well, speed guys will try and put down some bunts. He gone. Burley really caught Chris sleeping right there. Was not expecting the four seam fastball to come buzzing up there and couldn't pull the trigger. He put a little extra on it. Forget about it. He just filled it up. Go just realized no chance. I'll walk to the dugout. Here's Bayard. Takes it inside. Yeah, that streak by Frank of 14 consecutive opening day starts. That was the second longest in Sox history behind Ray Shock and Oleks and Payne's Luke Appling. They had 15. Current major league streak now is held by Jeff Bagwell with 15. Yeah, it had been he and Frank. You know what? I thought about that. I thought about Biggio. That's off to the right of the upper tank. Biggio must have missed an opening day from injury or something because Biggio's been making an open day starts for about the last 18 years or so. Now feel slightly to the right for the 2 2 pitch. And that's going to be foul. Hey folks, if you're out of market and you're a White Sox fan, you can still watch White Sox baseball games live right here, right at your computer. Sign up for MLB.tv now exclusively at WhiteSox.com. MLB.tv means live baseball. Well, the count hangs at two and two. That's in the right field. Jermaine. <laughs> Off day tomorrow, then Wednesday, Freddie Garcia against Kevin Millwood. And that game will be over. WGN, if you can't make it to the ballpark, plenty of good seats available. And on Thursday, in the finale of the series, and this brief homestand. Jose Contreras against Cliff Lee in that game right back here on Comcast Sportsnet. Yeah. Hafner takes strike one. Well, the funny thing is Travis Hafner and Broussard being in there against a lefty. Well, this Hafner makes you nervous against anybody. He can hit. He has a very good approach of driving the ball, first of all, towards left center field. If you make a mistake, he'll turn on you. But he likes being considered a good hitter first power hitter second ball and two strikes 27 year old solid solid offensive player after now three for 13 lifetime against Burley in his career and Creedy way off the line and back at third Rick Reed, the crew chief and the home plate umpire. This is just a this is just an umpire's delight for him. You got Burley and 
Westbrook out there. Just an easy day at the office with your feet up on your desk. And looks good on punt. That's low. Two and two. This full. Good effort by Burling and Pierzynski to try and tie Hafner up, see if he chased one. It kind of closes in on it and says, uh-uh, that's too close. He gone. That is 12 up, 12 down for Burley. And folks, let's take a look right now at our Aflac trivia Aflac. question. Relating to opening day, what former two White Sox pitchers hold the club record for most wins? Three on opening day. Right here we have ourselves a scoreless ball game going to the bottom of the fourth. No runs, no hits, no errors for the Indians. No runs, one hit, no errors for our Sox. Carl Everett, who struck out his first trip. Chases that one and chops it foul down to Tim Raines. Now we talked about it in between innings after Carl's last at bat when he struck out. That's uh, unfortunately how the end of preseason ended for Carl as he was swinging and missing way too much. Well, I talked with Aaron. I didn't talk to Carl, but Aaron told me that Carl told him the same thing. They couldn't see the ball in Milwaukee. And, you know, neither one of those guys uh, – no. Give you an alibi. Or no, an they're not excuse makers. Aaron said he just couldn't see it. Well, and and uh, Carl said he couldn't see it. That's twice now. <laughs> Carl has stepped out on Westbrook. Well, there's so much glare, and I pointed out that through those that glass that was coming in there in their stadium up in Miller Park, that there was so much glare. You can see where it might have been a problem. There's also a lot of glass out there in left and right center field off of their backdrop. See, what Carl's doing right here, I, I agree with. Stepping out, if you're ready, if you're not ready, step out. Step out. I mean, what's it? Greg Walker and I were having a conversation coming back on the bus. And the object is to beat the guy. Carl knows how to do these things. That's right. I mean, Greg, Greg and I were talking about the object is to beat the pitcher. And how can you beat him? Well, tee him off. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I use that's why I, one reason I stood so close to the plate off certain guys. I just wanted to, you know, tee them off, make them hot, upset them. Yeah. Yeah. Good pitch by Westbrook. Ate him up inside. Just did get a piece of it. But, I mean, that's the whole object is to, to beat that guy. And that's one good way to do it. Well, Carl is a very – smart hitter in that sense. He's not going to be intimidated by the pitcher. Off the end of the bat. You got a, so many guys that go to the plate. It's unbelievable. I, mean, I never really understood that philosophy. You go to the plate and, and you don't want to do anything to ruffle any feathers or make the pitcher mad. Well, you know what? It's I, just the opposite. You're supposed to make him mad. You know, I was I was kind of in between I was indifferent I was walking up there to hit throw me a pitch to hit period if they woke me up it was a different story I wasn't waking them up just you do your job I'll do mine here's Pauly he hit the ball very hard to Bayard who was playing him perfectly outfield just slightly to the left Detroit has defeated Kansas City 11 to 2 at Comerica Park I know the first two times up, Demetri Young. There's a shot base hit. He got that one up, and Polly made him pay. So the one-out single. Well, you said it, partner. That is, Westbrook gets it up. He's helping the opponent, that's for sure. And that is a perfect pitch to swing at. Now there's going to be a lot of guys say, "Well, that pitch is high. The pitch. You got a sinker baller out there on the hill. When a sinker baller gets a ball up, I don't care if it's out of the strike zone or not." tee off on it because if he gets it belt or below it's not as easy. Here's Jermaine. He had our other hit. 
Bounce one back through the middle in the second inning. Takes a strike. But I know the first two times up in that Tiger 11 2 victory against Kansas City, Demetri Young went deep of Jose Lima. Jose Lima has always given up a lot of home runs. That ball hit high and deep into right center field. Casey Blake makes the catch, two down. Other action shows Baltimore leading Oakland 2 0, top of the third at Camden Yards. Toronto hitting in the top of the first down at Tampa Bay. Minnesota hitting the top of the first at Seattle. Later on, Cubs taking on the D backs in Arizona. Milwaukee leading Pittsburgh 9 2 at PNC. Mets at Cincinnati. Tied at three, top of the seventh. And Aaron fouls it away. Phillies leading Washington 2 to 1, bottom of the third. Phillies at home against the Nationals. That just sounds different to hear. Washington. And I like it. And Dave Ross tells us an update on that Detroit game. Dimitri Young went deep three times. He had it locked in. And the He's weather. Yeah. Right? Talking about him day before yes? Yes. And the weather was conducive there in Detroit. As beautiful as it is here, it looked the same in Detroit. Four for four with five RBIs, three home runs. That's nice play by Peralta. And they get him. So Polly tried, he just couldn't get there in time. And we're into the fifth. U.S. Cellular presents Win a Jersey Wednesday. 15 randomly selected fans will have the chance to win a game worn White Sox player jersey during each of 12 Wednesday home games in 05. In addition, one fan will have a chance to win $10,000 on the final U.S. Cellular Win a Jersey Wednesday on September 21st. Compliments of U.S. Cellular. So for tickets, visit WhiteSox.com or call 866-SOX-GAME. Victor Martinez. Takes first pitch strike. Victor grounded out to Uribe at short. No score here in the top of the fifth. Chops that one foul down past Joel Skinner. Well, DJ, what you and I were just talking about in between innings right there is something that Sox fans who watched that 83 club saw something, and that was the best team I've ever seen do it. You know, man on first two out. Ball hitting a hole like that. Beating that play on the second base. But, you know, on that particular play right, Pauly was going as hard as he could go. Correct. You know, he just couldn't get there in time. Right. But, you know, there's so much involved in that play in, in anticipation that it might happen. As Martinez, big swing, foul ball. Pauly, as I talked to Tim Raines about this, and, and Canerco's name came up, has got to improve on one simple thing, just getting a little more aggressive in the secondary and lean, which might make all the difference in the world, not his effort. His effort is always there. He runs as yeah. hard as he can. But technique can be improved upon, and an inning can be extended because of it. Now, as I mentioned, that 83 club, I've seen a lot of teams. That 83 club, is there's a little change up, and that's trouble. They let it go, and it hits the seam in the grass, kicks foul. But, and for the fans who are wondering a little bit maybe what we're talking about, we're talking about Man on first, two out, and the key is, in your mind, anticipating that that ball is going to be hit in the hole and you're going to beat the play at second base. That's the whole key. And that's what they did so great back in 83, the winning ugly team. Davey Nelson was the first base coach, and Davey had those guys. He was constantly reminding them, hey, beat this play in the second base now. Anticipate that ball is going to be in the hole and beat this play in the second base. Well, that's something that Tim Raines is, is going to try to emphasize for our runners this year. All those little things, freeze on the line drive. But this is also, the funny thing is, it was spring training for Tim Raines. It was his first time coaching first base. And he knows all the things to do over there, and now he has to make sure that it comes across to the base runner. He hurt him enough. Yes. Yes. You know, we talked about this before also. If you don't listen to Tim Raines, then who in the heck are you going to listen to? <laughs> well, when it comes to base running. 
He sort of uh, there's a 2 2 pitch just off the outside corner. Sort of flabbergasted me the other day when you're talking about conversation you had with Eddie Murray and oh yeah, yeah. Those guys, a lot of those guys don't listen to what he's got to say. And there's a payoff right back through the middle, and that's the first base runner for the Indians. Lead off single here in the fifth, and just like our first hit was a base hit back up the middle. When you got a good pitcher out there, you don't want to try and do too much, and with a full count. Martinez did that. He just took what he could, got himself on base. So here's Boone. He popped up. The Scott Pesednik in left field. But you're talking about Eddie Murray, a Hall of Famer, and I'm talking about one of the smarter hitters you're going to ever talk to. Boone, bouncer down to three. One, two, three, no problem. Easy bouncer double play. Taylor made just what Burley was looking for. So the Sox who turned 167 of those last year. This is just ham and jam right there. Any hitter, I don't care who it is. Any hitter who will not listen to Eddie Murray talk about hitting has got to be a moron. Well, you just said it. Listen to Eddie Murray talk about hitting. And that's what I'm saying that they were having trouble doing, is listening and learning. It's not about technique. It's not about fundamentals. It's about hearing what he has to say and what he thought about as a hitter. He was one of the smartest hitters who ever played this game. He said he didn't figure it out. But they didn't want to take some of that information and put it to use. Here's a guy that was one of the most clutch hitters of all time. And I, I, I sit there and go, well, come on, Eddie. you got to be kidding. they got to at least hear what you're saying. He goes, no, man, I'll say stuff. They'll walk away like I... Just wasn't even talking to him. <laughs> but I think, and we saw this, with Eric Wedge especially, I think things changed throughout the year for this Cleveland team. They started taking some of his advice and putting it to use. That's into center field, Casey Blake. So we are halfway home in this scoreless time. Sports night at 6.30. Guys, this game is flying. Let's send it back to you. All right, gang. A.J. Pierzynski will lead off here in the bottom of the fifth. 0-2-0 for our guys. 0-1-0 for the Tribe. Pierzynski 0-1. He hit a rocket. Hardest ball has been hit. Uh, Westbrook just chops that one down to Broussard. So the lead man gone. And that'll bring up Joe Creedy. Yeah, but you know, getting back, uh, our, our players have to listen to Tim Raines, the coach at first, and you know, we were talking about Eddie Murray's comment to you that a lot of those hitters didn't listen to him. As I said, you got to be a moron not to listen to Eddie Murray, one of the great hitters who ever played this game, and especially in the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning when the nitty gritty was on. I mean, you know, I said I watched him play his whole career, and he would see him in the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning sit on pitches. And against good pitchers, they would make a good pitch, and he'd hit it out of the ballpark. Well, uh, there's, there's no question about Eddie Murray's ability to be clutch. I mean, the RBIs speak for themselves, and he did it in tough situations on bad teams. You do it with thinking. You yes. don't do it with talent. You do it with thinking. That's how you hit good pitchers late in ball games. And we talked about something else, uh, the fact that, you know, you don't have to like a guy, a coach, or anything like that to, to understand. You still can learn from him. I just told you, I don't know Eddie Murray. I'm not, I wasn't that big a fan of his as a, you know, as a, as a person, because I don't know him. I know one thing, he's the best first baseman I ever saw. Hey, overall, you, if you take it. Yeah, you've said that consistently. And I'll tell you something else. If I could listen to him talk all night, I would sit there and listen to him talk all night about hitting because you yeah. ball hit to that yard. Because you don't have to listen very long, you're gonna learn something you didn't know. Yeah, folks, and we're not just talking out of the side of our neck either, because I pointed out to Hawk. At 99, my last spring training was with the White Sox. I was standing around and on the bases doing my base running drills. Joe Nosick was standing there and he came up to me and said something different that I'd never heard. I said, you know, I've never heard it put like that before and that's a good way to implement it. Here's your rebate. Anybody <laughs> thinks they got a handle on this game? Fooling themselves. Well, you want to know the funny thing is there was another coach that said, what? You never heard that before? 
I mean, you don't, you learn something new. They actually look flabbergasted. I'd learned something. 0 oh and 2. Well, they will be teeing it up tonight against Roy Williams, Tar Heels. And uh, the best wishes go out to the fighting Illini and maybe they didn't bring it home. I think they can. I, I really think they can. I, I, the biggest thing over. I'm a big college and high school basketball fan. Is guard play and Illinois has got some great guard play. Little chopper. As Peralta on the move. Low throw. Nice pick right there by Broussard. One, two, three inning, and we're into the sixth. And let's take a look at our U.S. Cellular text message poll. Have you ever called in sick to attend opening day? Uh, text a yes or a no. Send your answer to 94769. Hmm. I haven't. Because I've been there. <laughs> I mean, is this for you, opening days? Oh, boy. That's eating somebody's up right there. Broussard. Yeah, this is I don't know, about 16 or so big leagues. 17. Are you? 102. 43 big league opening days. Yeah, that's uh, that's spending some time around here and not calling in sick. I'm going to pitch one out here in the top of the sixth. And here's Jose Hernandez. You know how we like to get those beauty shots around the ballpark, bringing the fans. If you called in sick, you could get busted. <laughs> I told you, I told you the first game I ever did. This is an announcer in '75. The guy that I knew pretty good was sitting in the stands there, and I said, "Yeah, there's Jimmy with his wife." <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's his wife? <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> Uh -oh. A big <laughs> lesson right there in my first telecast. Yes. <laughs> Jimmy so and so with his wife. <laughs> that was just a girl sitting to the left of him. Yeah. He gone. The breaking ball. Well, that's nothing new for Jose Hernandez. He is going to strike out. Matter of fact, he was the National League leader in strikeouts two different times. So a swing and a miss is something he's familiar with. Well, you, you know, one thing about it though. Whether you like Jose Hernandez or not, at least one swing in most of his bats that I have seen him play, you know, when, when he was with the Cubs and everything else and in Milwaukee, at least one swing in every at bat, he's going he's gonna to give himself a chance to hurt you. Oh, yeah. He's dangerous. Like yeah, you like to he's say. dangerous. And he has 159 career home runs. So, and he's a lifetime 253 hitter. So he's not all that bad. He well, just, he'll, he'll strike out. You better believe it. But he, that's what. You got to do is you got to give yourself a chance, especially against good pitchers, at least one swing in that at bat to do some damage, to be dangerous. Peralta grounded out to his counterpart, Uribe. Two and two. Pierzynski and Burley have just been in a tremendous rhythm today, along as so has Westbrook and Martinez. But you just like to see it. Battery work together like this. He gone. Yeah. We go to the bottom of the six. No score. What two former White Sox pitchers hold the club record for most wins on opening day? Jack McDowell and Billy Pierce. A couple of former sock greats, no question about that. Mark Burley pitching his fourth straight opening day. As you see, Scott Pesednik ready to start things off here in the bottom of the sixth inning, a 0 0 tie. Squares around, fouls it straight back under Martinez. Well, Jack also pitched the first game here at home when we opened up the ballpark in 91. On a day like this, maybe a little cooler, but a beautiful day. <laughs> 
We got beat up like <laughs> 17 to one by the Tigers. Not one of those three wins is there's a no. fister that Westbrook gets off quickly. He's gonna just go over there unassisted. Westbrook is making some very good pitches as we are seeing Burley do the same. Had to bring up number two hitter Tadahito Iguchi. Iguchi struck out in his first in bat and hit a little pop foul down to third base. Well, it's getting that time of the game where Westbrook and Burley both have not gone nine innings throughout spring training where you got to start watching what they're going to do. Good sinker on the outside corner to Iguchi. Breaking ball that Iguchi cannot lay off of. Quickly 0-2. Yeah, spring training, Burley or Westbrook, two pitchers that probably went seven innings the most. And they're not using a lot of pitches today. But you know, the pitching staff is, excuse me, the coaching staff is watching both of them. Breaking ball. Talked about a little while ago, Hawk. It really is going to take this batter some time. Sometime to see all of these guys that he did not see in spring training and make the adjustments. There's a shot handled down by Boone. Backhand sliding play. He comes up throwing. Nice play down at third base by Boone, but Iguchi put some good wood on that one. Well, it's just a bad feeling, as you know. It's a bad feeling. When you're breaking in, especially with a club that is going to be contending, and you're coming to a, a different culture, a new country, uh, which I can only say when I went down to Venezuela to play down there, and here you are, you're facing guys that uh, you've never seen, that he has never seen when they play the Grapefruit League guys. That's a bad feeling. Very bad. You feel naked in a sense. It's sure you do. Carl Everett up for the third time. He's looking for his first hit of the season. A ground out and a strikeout. But yeah, you know, you got the same feeling. You go down to winter ball. You have no idea some of these guys. Some guys you played against over here, others you didn't. Carl, big swing coming up empty. Two and two. Yeah, two fortunately, and all, most of the good ones, when you go play winter ball, most of the good ones you've faced before. You face them in the States. Oh, Carl had a good pitch to hit right there, and that's just going to let you know. Hawk and I talked about it the last couple of games of the preseason. Three, four games ago, that would have been hit a long way as a sellout this afternoon, folks. Attendance 38,141 as Westbrook going to have himself a quick one, two, three, bottom of the six, still no score. We got ourselves a 0 0 tie here in the seventh inning. Taking a look at our Nissan game summary as it's two hits to one. Burley been dealing, as has Westbrook. Diane Conerco got the hit, says. You see Coco Crisp square around and take a strike. Coco Covelli Crisp. Struck out looking his last at bat. And there's a shot off of the bat of Crisp. Back up the middle. So the Indians on the board with their second hit. And both hits for the Indians have come leading off an inning. Crisp with 20 stolen bases last year, but he was thrown out 13 times. Well, partner, Mark Burley, in his career, has only had 17 stolen bases against him. 17. That many? He's picked off 32. You get me to say that's. More than I would have guessed. Crisp has got a big lean as Burley's going to give him the generic pickoff move. Jeff Datz, first base coach, going to go over and let him let him know. Keep an eye on this. Keep an eye on that. Ronnie Belliard, Hawk mentioned earlier, is really last year ate the White Sox up. Squares around and takes a strike. Elliard had 12 home runs last year. But five of them came against us. Five of them. Five or six. I couldn't. Yeah. 
couldn't remember if it was five or six home runs that Belliard hit against us alone. That's owning the team. Six he hit against us. But in this situation, you can see that he is trying to do a little hit and run type action. Just punch it out in the right field, move that runner into third. Quickly 0 and 2. You know, those six home runs he hit, it seems like four or five of them won a ball game. Yes. Yeah. Just when we couldn't afford for us to give up the long ball, he stepped up and delivered it against. Burley trying to induce that double play. Yes. Little pop up right there to the mound. Conurco takes charge and he has it. Good job by Conurco. And while we have a second, the White Sox take on the Indians through this Thursday. That is Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. All fans receive White Sox magnetic schedules from Pepsi. For tickets, visit WhiteSox.com or call 866-SOX-GAME. Luis Vizcaino up in the bullpen now for the Sox as Burley has gone deep into this game. Mentioned doesn't matter. On opening day, generally, there's a pitch count you're going to have to watch. Burley is into the 80s in that. Travis Hafner struck out swinging last time up. Also grounded to shortstop. Well, so far, they've got him on the board here at 86 pitches. That's a, that's a good first day total, especially if you're already in the seventh inning with an out. Chris with a little lean towards second and Burley making sure he doesn't try and cheat on him. I think last year was the most success that any of any year that the base runners have had stealing against Burley. They ran a little more often in 03. I think there were only five stolen base attempts of all that year. Taken, but up in the zone, 2-0. and Hafner oh. with a count. Big, strong Travis Hafner. They got him in here from Texas right after Jim Tomei headed to Philadelphia, thinking that he would be some kind of replacement, and he's turned out to be. Taken up, 3-0. and oh. Burley appears to be concentrating a little bit on making sure he keeps crisp close at first with a good deceptive move to the plate and is out of the zone because of it. Uh, you cannot ease up here and give him a cookie. Whatever it's going to be, it's got to have a little something on it. Ball four. Burley. A bit of a fix. The leadoff single by Crisp. And four straight balls. First walk of the season for Burley. Victor Martinez, who led off the fifth inning with a line shot back up the middle, is one for two. And a big RBI man for these Indians last year, 108 driven in. Don Cooper on the phone, making sure that Vizcaino is ready to go. Boone on deck. With one out here in the top of the seventh inning. Off the outside corner, five straight balls by Burley as Coco Chris was out on second base doing a little dance trying to distract Burley. Mark needs to pick that focus back up, concentrate on the hitter. Good change up from Burley outside corner. It surprised me a bit if Burley decides to try and throw a nice little cutter down and in, a slider down and in, and induce a double play. It went in, but it was the fastball. First jam for Mark Burley in this ball game. As Westbrook has not had any tr serious trouble. He's just allowed three base runners. 
There's the bouncer. Down to Creed. He hops up for him. Over to second. Over to first. And he gets it. Once again, Burley makes the pitch just what he needed to get out of the jam. And this one stays at zeros. And take a look at our Giordano's delivery of the game. You just saw it. Mark Burley coming up clutch on the pitch that he needed. And it hopped up. Good job by Creedy staying with it. The Giordano's delivery of the game. Paul Canerco will lead it off. It'll be Canerco, Die, and Aaron Rowan here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Totals on the board identical at 0 2 and 0. Paulie one for two last time. Smoked a hard single into left field. Got a high fastball from Jake Westbrook. Strike on the outside edge. 21 the count to Canerco. Checks it up. And the count two and one. Well, Westbrook has developed into a good pitcher, yes, but this is the sharpest I have seen this guy look throughout a whole ball game so far. Also seems to be the most relaxed. The, another expression for confident. Yes. That's what he appears to be to me very very confident that fastball out of play right side souvenir so two and two well when he beat us last year he was I said it's not like we were overmatched but he was dominant but not like this last season he was one and one against the White Sox at a 4.76 earned run average his career four and three and a 6.23 earned run average. There's a shot. Fair ball. Down into the corner. So Canerco will start off the bottom of the seventh with a two-bagger. And here is when spring training comes into play because this team was very sound fundamentally as Canerco leads off with the double on the breaking ball if you ask me that's your best chance this afternoon against Westbrook if he makes a mistake with that breaking ball hit it you can see that and now Jermaine Dye has a job to do and he is very adept at going ahead and hitting it back up the middle into right center field Jermaine that base hit back in the second Takes a hard sinker outside. Well, this is putting pressure on Westbrook now to have to go ahead and take it to another level. He does not just want a little ground ball moving the runner along. That ball hit well in the right. Probably tagging. As Casey Blake stays with it, makes the catch, so Jermaine Dye indeed gets the job done. What a great job by Jermaine Dye. At first, it looked like that ball was going to get over Blake's head. But he got back there and up just in time. Watch this missile. AC Blake, the everyday third baseman for the Indians last year. So the tribe brings the infield in, and here's Aaron. Aaron is grounded to third, and he is grounded into a 6-4 fielder's choice. Nice and easy, 33. Well, if Aaron ever needed to be patient, we talked about good pitchers you got to be aggressive against, but Westbrook now is going to try and make some quality pitches. Aaron needs to take it back a little bit and get himself a good one. There's a chopper. Ball is off Peralta as Pauly scores, and the Sox lead it one to nothing.
It's going to be an error. Excuse me. A hit. As Peralta tried to come in and play it on the short hop. Hey, whatever you want to call it, it's a run for the White Sox. They lead this one one to nothing. It was do or die for Peralta on that hop, and here's Pierzynski. Aaron, decent lead at first. Now they're going to change it. D6 put an RBI. That, to me, is the right call by Bob Rosenberg. There goes Aaron Rowan. That's in the center field, but backing up is Belliard. <laughs> I'm liking what I'm seeing. As Aaron had a very good jump. We saw all spring long that Ozzie Gian had been saying, I got my guys going. We're going. No waiting here. So one won the count to A.J. Good Ow. pitch. Oh. I mean, hard down and in. Now, this hurts as this got A.J. And, uh, oh, back knee. That ball was hit. That pitch was so far in on him. Listen. Up that hard slider that AJ's had a little trouble getting to and laying off. Alfield spread out slightly to the right. Take that left. One three and zero oh for our Sox. O oh, two and one. For the Indians. Ate him up. Another good pitch. Bellyard can't make the play. And that'll be a base hit. Boy, A.J. Pruszynski just got his kitchen robbed as Westbrook was so deep in there. But watch how hard the catcher was running. You can't see in that shot, but he was digging his behind off down to first base, not taking anything for granted. And Belliard has hit that ball right off his heel and couldn't handle it. You see Pruszynski digging hard. So now one out, runners at the corners, and here's Creedy. Go twice has gone out to Bayard a second. Nice, nice take right there, that pitch. Well, so far, this Indians infield has not held up for Westbrook. And the count 2 0. No, oh, check that. It catches the inside corner, says Rick Reed. And Aaron Rowan just 90 feet from where he should be. And this probably uh, rack him up. Licks the 4 to 3, but the Sox get on the board. We'll go to the eighth leading 1 0. That more on a 90-minute sports night after the game, but now back to Hawk and DJ. All right, Kerry and Pat, thank you very much. First pitch strike to Aaron Boone leading off here in the top of the eighth inning. A one nothing good guys. It's in the right field. Jermaine. And folks, White Sox individual game tickets are on sale now at the U.S. Sailor Field ticket windows online at WhiteSox.com. Chicago land Ticketmaster outlets or by calling 866 Sox game. 
Right fielder Casey Blake twice he has gone out to Aaron in center. Good hard slider or cutter. Hands out in front of that nice pace. Good motion right there by Burley in the count one and one. Well, A.J. Pierzynski is putting the fingers down. Mark Burley's throwing the ball to him. He lets that catcher call the game for him. One hundred pitches now for Mark Burley. They got on the pitch count screen here, ninety-eight, but we're giving you it from the truck, the right one. And the count three and one. Jermaine. And taking a look at how Mark Burley's been getting it done. You see Burley is introduction today and then uh, you see Chris going down looking Hafner swinging Hernandez swinging it's just been one of those good days seven and two thirds two hits one walk four strikeouts he's getting in and throwing and he's dealing here's Broussard slider strike he's grounded to short and grounded back to Mark and the count very quickly 0 and 2. Well, Mark Burley looked this impressive all spring training also. He gone. Like out number five and we'll go to the bottom of the eighth leading one zip. And tomorrow night, the Red Hot Bulls continue their playoff drive when they head to Miami for a showdown with Shaq and the Heat. Bulls Heat tomorrow night at 6.30 right here on the exclusive local home for Bulls playoffs game, Comcast Sportsnet. Bottom of the eighth, Juan Uribe. High and deep, stay fair. Just a hair too quick for the number nine hitter. I was talking to Hawk earlier about it. it. We got about the best number nine hitter you're going to find in baseball. Oh, the numbers of last year. Good pitch by Westbrook. Throw one out. Saw a second ago we showed you a flash of Mark Burley giving. Dr. Payne, Herm Snyder, a hug, indicating that he is more than likely done. His eight innings of work is very impressive here on opening day. And of course, Herm Snyder's birthday today. Here's Pasednik. Got 0 for 2 with the base on balls. I said I'd like a 2 to 1 ball game today, but 1 to nothing will work. Scheduled hitters for the tribe in their half of the ninth will be Hernandez, Peralta, and Crisp. Eighth, ninth, and first hitters. One and two the count, Scotty. Just to tell you about spring training and its importance, Jake Westbrook didn't really need it. Told you his spring training numbers were one and one with a 675 earned run average. Opponents batted 400 against him in the spring. I don't think you've gathered that from the way he's thrown today. Here's a Gucci. He's 0 for 3 last time. Up hit a bullet that Aaron Boone at third. Made a very nice play on. One and one. Off day tomorrow. Freddie Garcia on Wednesday afternoon against Millwood. Thursday, 
Contreras against Lee. The Wednesday game will be over WGN. And the Thursday game right back here on Comcast. The 2 2. Here comes Boone on the move underneath. Nice play by the veteran. And a quick 1 2 3 inning. We'll go to the ninth. A 1 0 Sox lead. Take a look right now. The Dodge driver of the game. It's not a big one, but it's the one that counts. Bouncer off the bat of Aaron Rowan driving in. The only run of this game as Konerko scores. That's the Dodge drive. Bouncer of this game. So Polly, who had doubled to lead it off there in the seventh. And a pitching change. If you just heard that gong in the background, you know what that means. Shingo Takatsu is on for Mark Burley after eight strong. Impressive innings on opening day. Shingo last year, six and four, two, three, one earned run average, 19 saves once he took over as the closer. Ross Glow takes over at first base. And a pinch hitter for Jose Hernandez. It'll be the 29 year old brother of Joey Cora, Alex Cora. Takes first pitch strike. Cora last year with the Dodgers hit 264, 10 homers, and knocked in 47. Very quickly, 0 oh, and 2. Checks it up. Hey, if you just Getting home and tuning in, this has been some kind of a pitcher's duel this afternoon between Burley and Westbrook. These guys have been right on top of their games. He gone. And you've never faced Shingo Takatsu, and I do not think Alex Cora has. This is not going to be a fun pitch to try and get a piece of, and he did foul it off, but not enough. Grady Sizemore will hit for Peralta. Sizemore had been optioned down to the minor leagues until hamstring injuries put Gonzalez on the DL and he was recalled. <laughs> Sizemore last year hit 246 with a tribe, four homers, knocked in 24 and 43 ball games. Had a couple of big base hits against us late in the season. Just 22 years old. And that's popped up into short center field. Aaron coming on. Long way to go for Aaron Rowan, but that ball hung up for him. And let him come to him. Coco Crisp. First pitch fastball strike from Shingo. Corners in close and Glode a couple of steps off the line. Creedy about four or five steps off. Now field equidistant slightly to the left. And that's just off the corner. Alfonso Marquez 
two and one. Big rip. Two out. Two balls. Two strikes. There's a chopper. Good. Yes. yes. A beautiful play by Ross Glode. As we mentioned, was guarding the line, had to go hard to his right, and he got there. The defensive replacement, what the proper time to bring one in was just shown to you as Glode with a great play in Shingo doing his job getting over there just to get there in front of Chris. So the Sox take the opener here in 05, one and nothing. And right now, let's go back to our studios with Pat Boyle and Kerry Sayer. All right, Hawk, thank you very much. I know they added speed this year. I just didn't realize these games are gonna get done in under two oh hours. Oh my goodness. All right. Uh, Kerry Sayers with Pat Boyle with you. Bill Milton and Chuck Garfinder standing by for White Sox post game live. That show may actually last longer than the actual game. Day. I think it actually will. Before we uh, send it back to the park, here's some of the stories we're working on for a little bit later on this evening. Aramis Ramirez, rest easy, will be a Cub for a while. Today he agreed to a four year deal with an option for a fit. And later this evening, Bruce Weber, the funny obvious pitcher. Picked up his 70th career victory in a Sox uniform this afternoon, and he just went out there. And he's the kind of guy that just seems like that the more heat is on him, the more he loves it. He just loves the pressure. Well, there's no question. Mark Burley's going to be a pitcher that you know you can always rely on. He's going to take the ball every fifth day. He's going to give you the best that he has. We're going to have fast games, which bodes well for what we're trying to do this year. Pitching and defense. The defense was stellar behind him today, which led to this one to nothing victory. Some double plays that he needed. Everything was done the way it was supposed to be. Just enough offense, and the pitching and defense was there. The base running was aggressive. One to nothing victory. Thank you very much. And you know, when you, these are these are things that we talked about in spring training. We had a chance to during the 21 games. Is that you know when you face good pitching, like Westbrook was just outstanding out there today. When you face good pitching like that, you're going to have to win one nothing, two one, three two ball games. And we're better equipped to do that in 05 than we have been in the past because of the defense and the speed that we have. So it's uh, these just chalk one up. This is a big ball game. You know, you can't win anything in April as far as the pennant goes, but you can dead gum sure lose it in April. All right, guys, we'll see you back uh, on Comcast Sportsnet on Thursday. Great All job right. today. See you guys. All right, so the Sox win again, as we said, one to nothing. What stands out in your mind? Obviously, Burley was one of them. Well, Burley really stands out. He make he made Jess Westbrook throw a little bit better. Most times Burley throws, he makes other pitchers also throw well because he keeps the tempo of the game up. I think what the White Sox did today, Chuck, uh, was situational hitting. We'll be talking about that all summer. Jermaine died, deep fly ball to right field. Paul Canerico advancing the third base, then an air scores a run. It's the only run the, the White Sox score. But when you look at Burley, this is the way the ball club plays behind him. They play good defensive baseball. They generally don't score a lot of runs, but Mark Birdie will keep his ball club in the game almost every time he takes a start. All right, a lot more to talk about with Bill, but we're going to send it back out to the cell. That's where Mitch Robinson is. Mitch, take it away. You know, Chuck, you're talking about Mark Burley, and obviously his off-speed stuff worked really well today, changing speeds nicely. And then with the play there, they scored the run on where Paul Konerko comes in on the air. That is an example of the aggressive base running this team is going to go through all season long. You know, usually in years past, Paul Konerko might not be charging on that play. He's one of the, let's say, not fleet as foot players on this team. But he was going to come home. Ozzie wants to force defenses to make the throw. Some guys will get thrown out. Many guys will score, and today that was the point of making him come in. The player has to charge. They have to throw to first base. They make an error, and all of a sudden you're up one nothing, and that's the winner. So Sox very happy. Of course, later we'll hear from the Sox players as well as Ozzie Gein on the win, one and zero. Oh. What more could you ask for, Chuck? Oh, uh, you know what? We uh, we can thank you for bringing that great weather from Arizona. 
Yeah, I, I try to do my best for the team, you know? <laughs> All right, Mitch Robinson will send it back to you in a little bit. But you know what? He spoke about Ozzie Guillen. Ozzie Guillen speaking to the media. Let's listen in right now. Here's Oz. He's one of the toughest pitch in, in the league. Uh, it was, his sinker ball was outstanding today. He keep the ball. You keep the hitters uh, hitting ground balls. And uh, he did a tremendous job for them. And, you know, this, this kid's pretty good. That's why he was there. And I think besides that, everything went red. You know, we got a, the double by... Polly and uh, just one thing we want to do is just what Dai did. Just move the guy over and get the next hitter. And uh, uh, every day we have to play like this. You know, we can we can make too many mistakes. And the less mistake we make, he got we got to have a better chance to win. Was was there any thoughts of pulling uh, Mark earlier than you did? Well, I always got to give my starting starting pitcher uh, the opportunity to win the game. Uh, in the eighth, uh, we think about. As soon as somebody get on base, we got to pull him out. Just make sure he come he come out of the game. With the worst thing that can happen is not decision. I have, to, I have a confidence in my bullpen, and uh, I, right now I can have the privilege to do that. And uh, he went one, two, three in the eighth, and that's why I left him there. Pinch running uh, uh, for Canerco. No, because it was the seventh inning. It was zero zero game, and he's my best hitter. I have you know one of my best hitter. And I pinch run for him, all of a sudden we're going to score, we're going to lose him. Uh, if Conerco was in second base, we won out, we think about pinch run for him. It's not, I, I, I just got to leave him there. Yeah. So then how important then was that sack by him? Well, that's what I said. I think uh, that's what we were to play. Yeah, Dai did a tremendous job, moved the guy over, and we was running in contact, and everything went through for us. What do you think about the defense behind Mark? Well, it's easy to play defense behind Mark. It's, it's got to keep you in the toes. Uh, it's fun to play behind him. I think uh, the last play, it made me look like the best manager in baseball when I moved Conerco out of there and put Glow. But uh, that's the way we were play all year long. I think I don't have any, you know, we had a couple big double plays, and Gucci looked real good, turned the double play. That's what we want. That's what we're looking for. I think the guys, as soon as it's a double play situation and we get it done, I got to save this team a lot of runs. Did you seem a little overmatched offensively today? Well, it's first day, you know. First day here, everybody's anxious and hit the ball hard. Lots of bad. Uh, the long as just go and make the plays and uh, do his job. And uh, first day, it's just, you know, I, I, everybody's a little anxious. To who? No, I don't have time to. I just, I just go and let the kid play. He's a good player. You know, the more important thing he did for us is turn two double plays in, in the key situation, and he did. And uh, that's what I want for him. He play good different and get strong at bats. But first day, it's tough for everyone, especially him. He just come from another country first. First game in the big league, and obviously it's not the one we know, but I think it's, it's hit the ball good, lots of bat. Shingo right now, the closer. Is he the everyday closer now? Well, he was today. You know, uh, right now he is. I say that oh, the song is this game saved 18 games last year out of 19, and uh, he's going to be my closer to He can be my closer. I got three guys there. They have a closing uh, attitude, Vizcaino, uh, Hermiton and, and Marte, but right now Chingu is my closer. You said uh, Chingu is pretty bad at throwing control. Uh, is he bad? Pardon me? You told us that he's pretty bad at throwing control. Yes, he was. Uh, he, he, because we want him to use a lot of more fastball as a changeup. And his fastball was more stronger. And that's why he was using his fastball a lot. And he did it today. He, he maybe threw a couple, couple off pitch, pitch, and that's what we want from him. All right, there was Isaac Ian as the Sox uh, beat the Indians today one to nothing, a two hitter. Eight innings pitched for Mark Burley. Takatsu came in to save it in the end. You know, it's funny. During the offseason, they want to change this team, go away from a power hitting team to a small ball team. Uh, it doesn't get any smaller than this one to nothing, and they actually score those uh, winning runs or the winning run but by not even putting the ball out of the infield. And you know what? I want to hear from you, but Mark Burley is talking to the media. He's more important. Mark, take it away. Here's Mark Burley. Uh, everybody, everybody tried to tell me to get him out of here quick, and uh, I mean, I got to help. Westbrook helped out a lot too, getting in there, uh, getting a lot of ground balls, getting outs early. So it ain't just me; it's uh, it's it's our guys hitting and their guys hitting too. Is that the best opening day performance you could have hoped for? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, I I ain't complaining by any means. I want to go out there and pitch every game like that. But uh, a couple years ago, I had a, had a pretty good start in, in Seattle on opening day. But uh, you know, it's pretty much what we've been preaching, pitching, hitting, and defense, and, and everything came out to play. You know, as, as we've been preaching all spring. 
Is it kind of bad? concerned that you might or might not be stretched out enough just because, you know, you had the little foot thing and that set you back a start? I mean, were you concerned how long you can go? No, I wasn't. Um, I, I think the pit, uh, Ozzie and, and Cooper watching out, making sure with the pitch count. Um, but, you know, I, I wanted to go back out there for the ninth, but I understand the situation being opening day. Uh, that's what we got Shingle down there for to close out game. So uh, we, when we won the game, that's all that matters. Does it kind of add a little extra energy when you're pitching against someone like Westbrook today where neither team is really mounting much of, you know, a threat? Well, it makes the game go a lot quicker and get, gets everybody out of here. Um, you know, I mean, he's, he's in the strike zone, uh, getting ahead, ahead of our guys. Uh, I mean, kind of both the same way. We're, we're both out there throwing strikes and, and getting guys out early to count. When you were perfect early, did you go back to that Cleveland game from last year? Did you think about it at all? Uh, I kind of went through my head. I mean, especially once the guy got a hit and then double play and it was back to hit, uh, facing the minimum guys. But, I mean, it's, it's a long game. It's nine innings and uh, fourth inning, fifth inning, whatever. I mean, it's, once I get in the ninth inning, if I have something like that, then I'll start to think about it. Mark, did, did you think you should have knocked that ball down Martinez's head? It looked like you were up and mad at yourself. Well, I had never liked to give up hits up the middle. Um, just anything I can get my foot, my leg, anything I try to at least knock it down, and, and I didn't. So, yeah, I mean, I wasn't by any means mad at I gave up a hit. I was just mad at because it, it went up the middle, and I could have or I should have attempted to stop it better. Mark, did you feel a little stronger with the arm uh, after after the long layoff? Did the arm feel a little, a little better? I mean, just missing one start, it wasn't uh, wasn't that big of a deal. But, um, you know, I did feel strong out there. I think they, I think they had the, the gun juiced up a little bit, which – Made me throw it one throw a little bit harder, but uh, yeah, I mean, I felt fine out there, and I wish I could have went out for the ninth inning. How nice was it to see a Gucci turn those double plays behind you? Real nice. I mean, it's, it's key key part of the game. You know, get a guy on, and you know, Creedy and Rebe. I mean, pretty much, I, I think Rebe had seven, eight chances in the first couple innings. Uh, I mean, that's we got a good defense behind. Just let the ball, let them put the ball in play. As far as your repertoire, what was working best today? Uh, I pretty much had everything. Um, didn't didn't throw too many off speed pitches early in the game. Uh, I was just strictly fastball and, and threw a couple changes, but I mean, I had I had pretty much had everything moving and got lucky a couple times. A couple times I threw the ball right down the middle, and either they took it or fouled it off. So I mean, I had a lot of luck today too. Can you describe what it's like to pitch for a manager like Ozzy, who just seems to have the utmost confidence in you guys when when you go out there? Well, it's fun. I mean, it's it's good to have confidence or have have a manager have confidence in you because you know, you know, he's he's going to do everything he can to get the pitch starting pitcher a win, and he's not going to he's not going to let us get a loss. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's big time having confidence uh, for, from every guy on our team. Has he changed at all from last year, or is he pretty much no, the same? No, he's the same way. Was there ever any question about you going out in the eighth? Uh, he kind of brought it up saying, uh, you know, he didn't want to didn't give me a loss if, if we didn't score. He didn't want to put me back out there and, you know, kind of getting tired. But uh, once we scored that wrong, I think they, he sent me back out there just, just to try to get the win. All right, Mark Burley, the winning pitcher, eight innings, two hits. One walk, five strikeouts. He touched on it a little bit there. He got some help from his defense late in the game. That really helped. Mark Burley almost talked as long as the game was. I'm telling you, that's the <laughs> most I've heard him go. But, you know, rightfully so. The one thing Mark Burley does, though, he gets, you, he gets his team involved in the game, and that's his defense. Came up with really two big defensive plays. That's the way it's going to be all year. The guys behind him, Aguchi, and, of course, uh, Juan Arribe, his first year at shortstop, got a strong arm. Did a good job, and you saw Ross Glode come in. We're talking about defense now, how important it is. Ross Glode's uh, really an outstanding first baseman. He will play some outfield, but generally he'll come in for Paul Canerico. And I like the question that they ask Ozzy a little bit, why didn't you pinch run for Paul Canerico? Because this is the type of ball club that you think one or two runs is gonna, all they're going to score. But I think they're going to score a lot of runs. Today's game just shows that the defense uh, was very strong and the pitching was uh, just as strong right behind them. This is going to be exciting baseball because it sounds like they're going to be in every game. No major blowouts like we had last year, so that's good to see. All right, we have a poll question tonight which is this what scenario would you white Sox fans rather see all right we got a few options here here we go a is win both series against the cubs have the cubs let the world series slip away like it did in 2003 that's painful uh the Sox win every series against the twins the Sox win every series against the indians or have maglio not have a productive season a slow start today for maglio we'll have uh, that on sports night for uh, sure tonight. Log on to our website, ComcastSportsNet.com. Hit the link to Chicago. Find the Sox page. We'll update the results later in the show. Much more ahead here on Sox. Post game live. Look ahead to tomorrow's game. Actually, it's not tomorrow's game. It's in two days. Give a day off tomorrow. But we're back with more after this.